Welcome to Now in Android number 26. First of all, if you have an app on the Play Store and you want to update it, uh, you should really update your target API to API level 29 or greater because on November 2nd, any app updates to apps uh, need to be at that level or greater. Um, so most of the apps are actually there already, so not a big problem. But if your app is not, this is a perfect time to do it because on November 3rd, it'll be a day late. Android X releases, uh, the normal plethora of intermediate releases in the alpha and the beta channels and the RC channels and all that stuff. Uh, but in particular, there were a couple of stable libraries that are worth checking out. If you wait for stable versions, media 1.2.0, uh, bug fixes obviously, also improves audio attributes, compat support, um, support for volume control when using media router and various fixes for interop with Media 2. EXIF 1.3.0, not only does it have an important bug fix about out of memory situations, uh, but it also has the ability to write EXIF metadata to WebP files. Uh, the second unit of Android Basics in Kotlin, the course, uh, is now out. That means that uh, people with no software development experience can continue their journey. By taking this course, you can take someone with no coding experience whatsoever, and they can learn coding fundamentals as well as Android, as well as Kotlin, all at the same glorious time. In unit one of this course, which was released several weeks, a couple of months, sometime during the summer, uh, Kotlin Basics uh, was the name of the course, and it covered such fundamentals as classes and objects, coding fundamentals, conditional, stuff like that. Also, how to use images and text in a basic Android app. Unit 2 gets into layouts and overall UI issues such as XML layouts, material design, getting input from the user, and using Recycler View for listing data. Uh, students will end up building two different applications uh, where they get a handle on how all of this stuff works. And also, most important part, it has my favorite price. It is free. So go ahead, take the course, learn some stuff. In the play area, we had a bunch of different articles come out that explain different things about how to interact with Google Play, uh, the store, and some of the APIs. In particular, there was an article um, that clarifies some of the requirements policies around using the Play Store. For example, it went into details on use of the Play Store as well as other Play Stores, because there are other Play Stores that exist, obviously. Uh, and also uh, the requirements around using uh, Play Billing for in-app purchases of digital goods. And since there are a lot of details and nuances to this, we also publish an FAQ that further explains some of this stuff with questions as well as answers. Also, if you want to know some of the details on actually using the Play Billing APIs, Karen Chang has published a currently two-part series, uh, and you should check out both of those parts. On the Play Console side, uh, there is a new Play Console that came out back in June. It was announced then. It has been in beta the entire time, and it will be full release, stable release, on November 2nd. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, there's a chance to check it out before it is uh, in the stable version. Or you can just wait in anxious suspense. And then on November 2nd, you will get the console. And it will go from being the new console to the only console. Um, so check it out if you want, or just end up using it because uh, you will. Game developers, we came out with some articles and videos to help you uh, specifically around the area of texture mapping. So first of all, uh, Dan Galpin published an article and a video on texture compression format targeting. So texture mapping, obviously really important for game developers, one of the fundamental things that you do in game development. However, the images that you use for textures are obviously uh, potentially very large. So texture compression is an important technology um, to achieve smaller download, uh, as well as runtime footprint, as well as sometimes better runtime performance by optimizing the compression format. But not all devices have the same support for all of the same formats. So how do you handle that on your side as a developer? Play asset delivery allows you to provide multiple different formats for your textures in the app bundle that you use, which means that then app bundle on the Play Store side can choose the appropriate format based on the capabilities of the user device at runtime. Uh, so if you want to uh, check out the details on how this works um, for game uh, distributing your game, check out the article. Or if you prefer, check out the video, which has very similar content. Uh, also, there's another uh, video that was published by Francesco Carucci on how to use texture counting in the GPU inspector. This is a really nice use case and example of actually using the tool to track down real information and real problems in an app so that you can then 
go uh, address them. Textures are really at the heart of the graphics and rendering that a uh, game is doing, and therefore textures are also potentially at the heart of the performance problems that games can have. So understanding how to use the tools to track down the problems that you can get from textures, things like bandwidth and caching and filtering, uh, is a pretty important step in uh, game development overall. Um, there were a bunch of other articles that were uh, published. One was in Recycler View, the basics. So chances are, if you've been an Android developer for a while, you are already using uh, Recycler View. You have your, your head around this thing. You know what's going on there. But sometimes if people are new to the platform or maybe they haven't been using uh, working in the UI area, maybe they're working on legacy code, and it's really time to step up into the Recycler View world, which has been the, the main world for a while now. Um, but it's kind of hard to get that basic information. The docs that we have, like we have a great guide and we have sample code and we have code labs around Recycler View, but they all tend to sort of dive in really deep. If you just want to understand the basics of how it works, or you just want to create a simple Recycler View that lists, say, uh, a bunch of items with text strings in it, um, then there's a lot of dots to connect along the way. And so the purpose of this article and probably an ongoing series of Recycler View is to sort of step back and talk more about the basics and fundamentals of how Recycler View, view works as well as publishing sample code, uh, which Megan Meta has done along with the article um, to help you get up to speed on how this stuff works and how you can use it in your app. There's a new myth-busting article on performance uh, that is uh, on the Medium site. Um, lots of uh, myths on how to improve Android app performance, uh, like Kotlin versus Java, app size and startup, fields versus getters and setters, or Lambda versus inner classes, or the use of object pools. There's lots of myths and, and uh, conspiracy theories around all of this stuff. Um, so the article goes into a nice amount of detail on all of these areas, pros and cons of different approaches, um, why people think this is a, a solution for them, why it probably isn't in most cases. But the most important takeaway from the article, I'm going to spoil it right here, uh, is that you should actually profile your app using the non-debug version, important point, um, to find out where the performance problems are so that you don't spend your important time fixing problems which are actually not a problem on the user side. Uh, security and authentication, um, there was an article published there to uh, talk about the different tiers of authentication that are available. And then it goes into detail on some of the details for the biometric APIs that have been introduced in Android P, Android 10, and now Android 11 as well. So you have a better handle on sort of mental model of how the stuff actually works together to make your code, your apps, and user devices more secure uh, and authenticatable. Is that a word? As usual, all of the links to everything I talked about are in the article. So go check out the link, uh, the links in the articles for all the details. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.